Hello, this is the 26th video on my multivariable calculus course. So in this video, we're going to talk about line integrals. There are two different types of line integrals. The first one is called scalar line integrals, and the second one is uh, vector line integrals. Assume the mass density of a thin wire C at a point XYZ is given by f of x, y, z. So we have a wire. We're assuming that this wire is a thin wire, which means it doesn't have any thickness. And at every point, we have density at that point. So notice that density here is mass over length rather than math over mass over volume. The line integral is given by the, it gives us the total mass. Why? Because if you multiply uh, f of x, y, z, which is the density, by ds, and this ds is the arc length, we are going to end up with the mass. So f of x, y, z, that is density. When we multiply density by arc length, we're going to get mass. And when we take the line integral, that's the total. So that gives us the total mass. Now, from what we have learned earlier, derivative of the arc length is um, magnitude of velocity. So why is that true? Because arc length was integral of speed. So if we differentiate arc length, we're going to get magnitude of velocity or speed. So in order to evaluate this line integral, all we're going to do is we're going to re replace ds by magnitude, magnitude of r prime dt and evaluate. We need to be sure to replace x, y, z by the uh, parameterization that we uh, have created for c. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples on this one. The first example is evaluate this uh, line integral with respect to arc length, where c is the helix from 0 to pi over 2. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate the velocity. The velocity is the derivative of uh, position. So that would be minus sine t cosine t1. And speed would be magnitude of that, which is the square root of sine squared plus cosine squared plus 1 squared. So that is root 2. So what does that mean? It means ds is root 2 dt. So in order to evaluate this line integral, we'll have to replace x, y, and z by the values that they gave us. So x is cosine of t, y is sine of t, and z is t. So this would be x, which is uh, cosine of t plus sine of t plus t. Limits of integration are 0 and pi over 2. They gave us these numbers. And then we'll have to multiply by ds. And ds is root 2 dt. So this would be, we'll integrate cosine. Integral of cosine is sine. Integral of sine is minus cosine. And integral of t is t squared over 2. And that will be multiplied by root 2. Root 2. And this ranges from 0 to pi over 2. Next, we're going to plug in the values. So we get sine of pi over 2 minus cosine of pi over 2 plus pi squared over 4 divided by 2. So that's 8. Minus, when we plug in 0, we get sine of 0 minus cosine of 0 plus 0 squared over 2 times root 2. And of course, this have, has to be simplified. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0 plus pi squared over 8 minus sine of 0 is 0. Sine of 1 is 1. And that last one is 0. All of that multiplied by root 2. So that would be our answer. And that can, can be simplified a little further. Okay, so let's look at the next example. The first one, they gave us the parameterization. For this one, they told us that C is the segment joining these two points. So we have the two points 
0, 1, negative 1, and negative 2, 3, 0. So this is point A, and this one is point B. Segment is part of a line, so we can find the parameterization by looking at the uh, direction vector. So direction vector A, B is minus 2, minus 0, so that's minus 2. 3 minus 1, that's 2. And 0 minus minus 1, that is 1. So that is the direction vector of this line. So a parameterization for this line would be, x would be the first point, which is 0 plus negative 2 times t. y would be the first point, which is 1 plus 2t. And z would be minus 1 plus t. Now, what are the limits of t? Well, t equals 0 gives us a, and t equals 1 gives us b. So these are the limits of integration. So this is our uh, r of t. Now, let's evaluate r prime of t. r prime of t would be the derivative of these x and y and z. Derivative of x is negative 2. Derivative of y is 2. Derivative of z is uh, 1. Now, line integral of x squared y ds is going to be integral from 0 to 1. Let's evaluate the uh, speed as well. This would be square root of 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is 3. x is minus 2t squared, and y is 1 plus 2t. And ds is our prime, which is 3 dt. And this is a pretty simple integration. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate this one. We'll take out the 3, integral from 0 to 1, 4t squared times 1 plus 2t dt. So this would be 3 times. I'm going to take out the 4 as well. So that would give us 12. And once we multiply, we get t squared plus 2t cubed dt. And t ranges from 0 to 1. So we get 12 times t cubed over 3 plus 2t to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 1. We're going to substitute 1, we get 1 third plus 1 half, and at 0, we are going to just get 0. And this is 4 plus 6, which is 10. So that would be our answer. So notice that the answer to these problems, so the previous problem we ended up with 2 plus pi squared over 8 times root 2 are scalars. So you see these two are scalars. It gives you the total mass, assuming that the integrand is mass density. Let's look at one more example. Evaluate this line integral where C is part of the unit circle in the xy plane centered at the origin in the first quadrant. So let's draw the diagram. So it is part of the circle unit circle centered at the origin in the xy plane uh, and in the first quadrant so it is this one followed by the segment connecting 1 0 and 0 0 and 0 0 0 1 so this is our curve c as we see this curve doesn't have one parameterization so we have to parameterize it uh, we have to break this down into three different curves, C1, C2, and C3, and provide a different parameterization for each one of them. C1 is given as R of t equals cosine of t, sine of t. And t ranges from 0 to pi over 2. So that's C1. C2 is, let's call that R1 of t, R2 of t equals, well, x component is t, but z, uh, y component is 0. And t goes from 0 to 1. And c3 is given by R3 of t equals 0, comma t, because the x component is 0, and y component is between 0 and 1. We'll go ahead and evaluate each one of these line integrals separately. So we're going to evaluate r1 prime of t, that would be minus sine t cosine of t, and r2 prime of t 
is going to be 1 comma 0 and our 3 prime of t is going to be 0 comma 1. Then we take the magnitude of each one of them. R1 prime of t would be magnitude of that would be square root of sine squared plus cosine squared of t which is 1. R2 prime gives us 1 because it's square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared and R3 prime gives us also 1. So now if we look at the original line integrals uh, line integral that they gave us it was in the integral of x plus y ds so this is going to be if you look at the first one we are trying to find the total mass of this uh, curve this like wire when the mass is given as x plus y so how do we evaluate the total mass we can find the total mass of c1 plus mass of c2 plus mass of c3 so we can do the line integral over c1 plus the line integral over c2 and then plus line integral over c3 and then add them up so we saw that all of these had uh, parameterization that we found but the parameterizations were different. The first one was 0 to pi over 2, x was cosine of t, y was sine of t, and ds was 1 dt. The next one was 0 to 1, x was t, and y was 0. Again, ds was 1 dt. And the last one is 0 to 1, 0 plus t, x component was 0, and ds was dt. So the last two are the same. Let's integrate these. Integral of uh, cosine is sine. Integral of sine is negative cosine. And the limits of integration are from 0 to pi over 2 plus. The last two integrals are the same. They are t, t, t squared over 2 from 0 to 1. So let's evaluate each one of these and then add them up. Pi over 2, when we plug in pi over 2 for sine, we get 1. Plug in pi over 2 for cosine, we get 0 minus. Plug in pi over 2 for 0 for sine, we get 0. Plug in 0 for cosine, we also get 0. Uh, we get uh, 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Plus, and then when, when we substitute that here, we get 1. So all of that becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. So that means the total mass of this wire is 3 if x plus y is the mass density. Notice that this function that is integrand doesn't have to be mass density. If it is charge density, then our outcome would be total charge. Whatever quantity that you put in there, that's what you expect to get out of the integral, the line integral. So that was the first type of line integral. The second type of line integral is called vector line integrals. These vector line integrals are going to evaluate the work done by a force. So something that we talked about early on in the semester was that if you take an object and under an influence of a force it moves uh, at displacement of d and let's say the force is f then the work done by this force is the dot product of f and d. So that's the total work done by force f which is a constant force on this object when the displacement is d. Now if you want to change the um, path and also change the force then you're forced to do something quite different. Basically take these and add them up. So let's say you have a curve c and at every curve, at every point, you have a different force. So this is uh, different values of f. So this would be f of x, y, z if that point is x, y, z, etc. So the force is changing, and we are also work, uh, walking uh, along a path which is not necessarily a straight line. Now, what are we trying to do? We are trying to find the total work done over this curve. So what we do is we take F, which is the force, and we multiply by dr, which is essentially the direction that we are going. Derivative of position gives you the direction. And then we take the total. 
And we can evaluate this one by replacing dr by r prime t dt. Note that when you change the orientation of your c, your total work is going to be negated. So the total work from point A to point B is negative the total work from point B to point A. So let's do an example on this one. Let C be the unit circle in the xy plane centered at the origin oriented clockwise. Evaluate this line integral. So the first thing is diagram. We're going to draw the diagram. It is a unit circle centered at the origin. It's called the unit circle. And it is oriented clockwise. So the orientation is this way. So the first thing is a parameterization. So x equals cosine of theta y equals sine of theta. Now, if you go counterclockwise, then theta would go from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, and, uh, oh, and by the way, this is what I did here was counterclockwise. They said clockwise. Uh, so clockwise would be this way. So if uh, you go counterclockwise, theta would go from 0 to 2 pi. So if you go this way, angle ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So here, and uh, theta ranges from 2 pi to 0. So this is the parameterization. Now, to find the line integral, what we can do is we are going to do the same thing that we did uh, before, except here we have to find the dot product. Limits of integration, because we are going uh, clockwise would be from 2 pi to 0. y is going to be sine of theta. x is going to be cosine of theta. And then we have to find our dr. dr is r prime. r prime is minus sine theta and cosine of theta, d theta. And then we're going to have to find the dot product, and then we, we are going to have to evaluate the integral. So finding the dot product, we'll have to multiply these two and then multiply these two and then add them up. So we get negative sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. And this was a negative sign that I forgot. Uh, d theta. So this is going to be the integral from 2 pi to 0 of minus 1 d theta. So integrating that, we get 0, 2 pi to 0 of negative 2 pi, negative theta. When we plug in 0, we get 0 and minus, minus 2 pi. So the answer here is going to be 2 pi. Okay, so let's look at uh, another way of, I'll, I'll do one more example, but there's another way of uh, writing down these line integrals of vector fields that is in fact more common. If a curve C is parameterized by R of T equals X of T, Y of T, Z of T, and Z ranges from A to B, and your vector field is MI plus NJ plus PK, then we can write down the line integral as this would be our F vector field. This would be as DR. Once we find the dot product, we get MX prime plus N y prime plus p z prime. Now if you look at these two x prime dt can be written as dx. If you look at these two y prime dt can be written as dy and z prime dt can be written as dz. So this is a more common way of writing down a line integral. So in other words the line integral of f dot dr oftentimes is written as line integral of m dx plus n dy plus p dz. And those are the same thing. So let's do one more example. Evaluate this line integral where c is the segment from this point to that point. So we'll take the segment, write down the parameterization of, a, of the segment, and then follow what we did before. So let's write down the parameterization. The two points are 1, 0, 2, and that's the initial point, and 3, negative 1, 1. So the direction vector is going to be 2, negative 1, negative 1. Now, 
if we uh, write down the parametrization, it would be 1, 0, 2, that's the initial point, because A is the initial point, plus 2t minus t minus t. And if we write it down like this, then the initial point is t equals 0, and the terminal point corresponds to t equals 1. Now we can find the derivative of the parametrization. So we're going to get 2, negative 1, negative 1. Then we're going to take the magnitude of that. Uh, oh, no, we don't actually need the magnitude of that because here we are trying to find a line integral of a vector field, which doesn't require taking the magnitude. So let's write it down. So line integral of x squared plus z dx plus x minus y dy is going to be, okay, so limits of integration are 0 to 1, x squared, well, x is 1 plus 2t, so that would be x squared plus z, z is 2 minus t dx, so this guy gives you dx, this is essentially x prime, so I'll just put it right there, so multiply it by 2 plus x minus y, so x is 1 plus 2t, minus y, that's plus t. And then dy, and dy is negative 1, all of that dt. Because this is y prime. And I have also a z prime here, but I don't need it for the line integral because there was no dz in the line integral. So the rest is evaluation of this line integral. So this is integral from 0 to 1. This is a polynomial, so we'll can, we can expand and evaluate the line integral. So 2 times 1 plus 4t plus 4t squared plus 2 minus t minus 1 minus 3t dt. So let's multiply it out. We get 2 plus, so this would be in fact 3 multiplied by 2. So that's 6 plus 3t times 2, that's 60 plus 8t squared minus 1 minus 3t. All of that dt. This is integral from 0 to 1. So this is 8t squared plus 3t plus 5 dt. Okay, let's evaluate the integral. So that's 8t cubed over 3 plus 3t squared over 2 plus 5t from 0 to 1. And once we plug these in, we get 8 thirds plus 3 halves plus 5. And at 0, everything becomes 0. And that's the answer to this problem. So to summarize what we did uh, in this video was we talked about two different kinds of line integrals. The first one is line integral of a scalar function. If this uh, density function is the scalar function, with respect to the arc length, we are finding the total mass of our curve. To evaluate the line integral of f of x, y, z, d, s, we write down a parametrization and we replace d, d of s by r prime, magnitude of r prime, dt. To evaluate a line integral of dot product, um, we replace dr by r prime, dt. And this line integral evaluates the work done by f along c. And sometimes this line integral is written as m dx plus n dy plus p dz. One thing to keep in mind is that line integral of scalar functions does not change if we change the orientation of c, because that's just the total mass. But line integral of vector field does change its sign. I will see you in the next video.